This video tutorial is on reliability. My students can access the video tutorials for these problems using the content menu in D2L. YouTube viewers can access the video tutorials on my MOOC on Udemy.com. I have a long and short version of the URL posted on the screen, and I will post this URL in the description. Reliability is the ability of a product, service, part, or system to perform its intended function under a prescribed set of conditions. The prescribed set of conditions is important, so you don't measure reliability of a car by taking it out to the desert. Independent events. This is a statistical term, but we need to know it here. These are events whose occurrence or non-occurrence does not influence each other. So with your car, the probability of your engine failing is not related to the probability of your brakes failing. Those are independent events. Redundancy is the use of backup components to increase reliability. So in your car again, you've got your primary braking system. You hit the brake pedal and the car slows down and stops. If that fails, your parking brake, also known as your emergency brake, still works. So that's a backup system. So that's braking redundancy. I'm going to briefly, briefly talk about calculating reliability. There are more details in the tutorials as I mentioned at the start of this video. Series reliability is when you have multiple components that are independent of each other and a failure of any of these components causes the system to fail. To get the overall reliability, you just multiply the independent reliabilities. So here I have three components with an 80%, 90%, and 75% reliability. Multiplying those numbers together gives me a 54% reliability. In this case, your overall reliability is always going to be less than your smallest reliability. So my smallest reliability here is 75%. So I know before I start that my overall reliability is going to be lower than 75%. Having redundancy increases reliability. We talked about that. The more redundancy you have, the more reliability you have. If you have three redundant components, for example, as we do shown on the screen, then all three of those must fail in order for the system to fail. To figure out reliability with redundancy, I first convert each reliability to its complement. So the 70% becomes 30%, the 80% becomes 20%, and the 90% becomes 10%. Then multiply all of those numbers together and subtract them from 1. When you have redundancy, the overall reliability of that set is always higher than the highest reliability. In addition, adding a, another redundancy, even one with low reliability, always increases the overall reliability. One issue you can have with redundancy is when you have unreliable switches between the primary and backup systems. It's usually the case that you have a fairly seamless transition, but not always. So in my car example, when the main brakes fail, the parking brake still works. Not everybody knows that, or not everybody would think about that in an emergency. So there is a less than perfect transition from the main brakes to the parking brakes. When the switch is less than 100% reliable, then that reduces the reliability of the backup component. So if you had a backup with an 80% reliability and the switch only had a 95% reliability, the backup would actually have a 76% reliability. Once you've accounted for the unreliable switch, the problems work the same. When you have a series that combines both series com reliability and components with backups, the first thing you do is compute the overall reliability for any components with redundancy. Once you've converted every single one of those to a single number, you then just work it as a series reliability problem. Mean time between failure, usually just abbreviated MTBF, is the average length of time between failures of a product or component. Many products come with a mean time between failure rating. This is fairly common in the computer industry. Mean time to repair is the average time it takes to repair the item, including any wait time for the service technician to arrive. Availability is the ratio of time a piece of equipment is expected to be available for operations. This is a combination of its mean time between failure and its mean time to repair. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and consider subscribing to this channel.